Welcome to the Growth Mindset Company's YouTube channel, where we delve into the intricacies of the Fittick Yellow Book, guiding you through its essential clauses with clarity and precision. Today, we're focusing on Clause 15.2, a critical component of contract management in the construction industry. This clause plays a vital role in defining the conditions under which an employer can terminate a contract. Understanding its complexities is not just important, it's crucial for professionals navigating the field of construction contracts. In this video, we'll break down the key aspects of Clause 15.2, exploring its implications, interactions with other clauses, and the procedural flow for its implementation. Whether you're a seasoned professional or new to the world of FIDIC, this video is designed to enhance your understanding and equip you with the knowledge to navigate these clauses effectively. So, sit back, relax, and get ready to dive into the world of FIDIC contracts with us. If you're as passionate about learning and growing in your professional field as we are in providing this content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos. Let's embark on this educational journey together. Here's your comprehensive guide to Clause 15.2 of the Fittick Yellow Book. Understanding the intricacies of Clause 15.2 in the FIDIC Yellow Book is paramount for both parties in a construction project. This clause provides a framework for the employer to terminate the contract under specific conditions. Let's delve into the key aspects and their practical implications non-compliance and corrective notices. The employer has the right to terminate the contract if the contractor fails to meet the performance security requirements as outlined in sub-clause 4.2. Failure to rectify issues after receiving a corrective notice under sub-clause 15.1 also constitutes grounds for termination. Abandonment or non-performance. Abandonment of the works or an evident intention not to fulfill contractual obligations can lead to termination. Inadequate progress, clause 8, or non-compliance with notices regarding rejection, subclause 7.5, or remedial work, subclause 7.6, within 28 days are also valid reasons for termination. Unauthorized subcontracting or assignment. The employer may terminate the contract if the contractor unlawfully subcontracts the entire works or assigns the contract without necessary approval. Financial instability, bankruptcy, insolvency, or similar financial difficulties faced by the contractor allow the employer to terminate the contract. Ethical violations. Any form of bribery or unethical inducements related to the contract by the contractor or their personnel is a serious offense, warranting immediate termination. Procedure and Notice Generally, a 14-day notice is required for termination. However, in cases of financial instability or ethical violations, immediate termination is permissible. Post-Termination Obligations Following termination, the contractor must vacate the site, hand over all relevant documents and goods to the engineer, and adhere to instructions ensuring safety and security. Employer's Rights Post-Termination The employer reserves the right to complete the works using the contractor's goods and documents, either independently or through other parties. Disposition of Contractor's Equipment The contractor's equipment and temporary works will be released for removal. However, if the contractor owes the employer, the employer may sell these assets to recover the outstanding payment. Understanding these points is vital for effective contract management under the FIDIC framework. Both parties should be aware of these provisions to ensure smooth execution and termination processes, if necessary. Continuing our comprehensive exploration of Clause 15.2 in the FIDIC Yellow Book, let's delve into the diverse interpretations and implications of this clause. Purpose of Clause 15.2 Primary Intent the main purpose of Clause 15.2 is to establish a legal framework for the employer to terminate the contract under certain conditions that signify a breach or failure by the contractor. It creates a clear legal precedent for contract termination. Risk Mitigation This clause acts as a pivotal risk management instrument. It enables the employer to proactively mitigate potential losses or damages that may arise due to the contractor's non-compliance financial troubles, unethical conduct, or work abandonment. Implications of Clause 15.2 
For employers, this clause offers employers a structured approach to protect their interests. It provides them with the authority to take decisive action in situations of non-performance or contractual breaches by the contractor. For contractors, it emphasizes the critical importance of adhering to the terms of the contract. Contractors are reminded of the potential risks and consequences they face if they fail to fulfill their contractual duties or engage in prohibited activities. Primary Aspects of Clause 15.2 Specific Grounds for Termination Clause 15.2 details various grounds that justify the termination of the contract. These include non-compliance with performance security requirements, abandoning the works, failing to rectify issues, unauthorized subcontracting, financial instability, and ethical violations. Notice Requirement This clause mandates a notice period, generally 14 days, before the employer can proceed with termination. However, in cases involving ethical violations or financial instability, this requirement may be waived, allowing for immediate termination. Post-termination obligations the clause also specifies the contractor's obligations after termination. This includes the requirement for the contractor to vacate the site and hand over all relevant documents and materials, ensuring a smooth transition post-termination. Understanding the various interpretations of Clause 15.2 is vital for both employers and contractors. It not only ensures compliance with the contractual terms but also provides insights into the rights and remedies available under different scenarios of contract management as per the FIDIC Yellow Book Standards. Continuing our in-depth analysis of Clause 15.2 in the FIDIC Yellow Book, let's break down the key components of this clause. These components represent critical actions or situations that can trigger the employer's right to terminate the contract. Non-compliance and correction notices. Performance security non-adherence. If the contractor fails to comply with the performance security requirements as outlined in subclause 4.2, it provides a ground for the employer to terminate the contract. Failure to rectify issues. The employer also has the right to terminate the contract if the contractor does not address and rectify an issue that is specified in a notice to correct, as per subclause 15.1. Project abandonment or non-performance. Abandoning the work. The employer can terminate the contract if the contractor abandons the project, showing a clear intent not to continue the work. Failure to progress and comply with notices. Non-performance is also established if the contractor fails to progress as per the stipulations of Clause 8, commencement, delays, and suspension, or does not comply with notices regarding rejected work, sub-projects life cycle. As we continue to dissect the intricacies of Clause 15.2 in the FIDIC Yellow Book, it's crucial to understand the process flow for termination of a contract. This flow ensures that both parties are aware of the steps to be taken in the event of contract termination. Here's a step-by-step -step overview. Identification of a breach. The process begins with the identification of a breach of contract. This breach must fall under the specific criteria outlined in Clause 15.2, such as non-compliance with performance security, project abandonment, unauthorized actions, financial instability, or ethical violations. Issuance of Notice Once a breach is identified, the next step is for the employer to issue a notice to the contractor. The type of breach determines the notice period. In general, a 14-day notice is required. However, in cases involving financial instability or ethical violations, the employer is permitted to terminate the contract immediately without the standard notice period. Contractor's Response and Obligations Following termination, the contractor has several obligations to fulfill. They must promptly vacate the site and hand over all relevant documents and materials to the employer or the appointed representative. The contractor is also required to adhere to any instructions pertaining to the safety and preservation of the worksite and any ongoing works. Employer's Rights and Actions Post-Termination After the termination of the contract, the employer has certain rights and actions they can undertake. They may choose to either complete the works themselves or contract it out to other entities. In doing so, 
they are entitled to use the contractor's resources, such as equipment and materials, if necessary. Disposition of contractor's equipment. The employer is responsible for releasing the contractor's equipment for removal from the site. However, if there are outstanding payments owed by the contractor to the employer, the employer has the right to retain and possibly sell these items to recover the owed amount. This process flow is critical for ensuring that both the employer and the contractor understand their rights and responsibilities in the event of a contract termination under Clause 15.2 of the FIDIC Yellow Book. It outlines a structured approach to managing such situations, ensuring clarity and fairness for all parties involved. In the context of Clause 15.2 in the FIDIC Yellow Book, its interactions with other clauses are pivotal for a holistic understanding of contract management. Let's delve into these interactions. Interaction with Clause 4.2, Performance Security, Direct Connection. Clause 15.2 incorporates a provision for termination if the contractor fails to meet performance security requirements as set in Clause 4.2, underscoring the importance of performance security in guaranteeing the contractor's commitment. Consequence Management, the implications of not maintaining valid performance security, as detailed in Clause 4.2, directly contribute to the conditions that can initiate termination under Clause 15.2. Interaction with Clause 15.1 Notice to Correct Precursor to Termination Clause 15.1 acts as a preliminary measure before invoking Clause 15.2. It necessitates the issuance of a notice to correct a failure by the contractor, with the failure to remedy this leading to potential termination under Clause 15.2. Opportunity for Rectification This interplay provides the contractor with an opportunity to resolve issues prior to facing termination, showcasing the fair and procedural nature of FIDIC contracts. Interaction with Clause 7.5, Rejection, and Clause 7.6, Remedial Work. Basis for Termination Failure to comply with Clauses 7.5 and 7.6, which deal with rejection and remedial work, can constitute grounds for termination under Clause 15.2, highlighting the significance of contractual compliance. Quality and Compliance Assurance These clauses work in tandem to ensure adherence to the contract's quality standards and the prompt rectification of any deficiencies. Interaction with Clause 2.5, Employer's Claims Financial implications. If the contractor neglects to fulfill a claim made by the employer under the contract, as outlined in Clause 2.5, it can trigger termination as per Clause 15.2. Claims process and contract enforcement. This interaction emphasizes a structured approach to dispute resolution and the potential consequences of unresolved contractual disputes. Interaction with Clause 8.8, .8, Suspension of Work. Suspension leading to termination. While Clause 8.8 .8 concerns the suspension of work, ongoing suspensions attributable to the contractor can escalate to termination under Clause 15.2. Control over work progression. This highlights the authority of the employer and engineer over the project's progression and underscores the contractor's duty to comply with directives, with non-compliance potentially resulting in severe contractual consequences. Interaction with Clause 19. Force Majeure. Clause 15.2 and Clause 19. Though Clause 15.2 lays out the employer's termination rights, Clause 19, Force Majeure, may provide exceptions where termination is not justified due to extraordinary, uncontrollable events. Shared Effect. This interaction ensures a balanced approach to contract termination, taking into account unforeseen and uncontrollable circumstances that may affect the contractor's ability to fulfill their obligations. Understanding these interactions is key to comprehensively managing contracts under the FIDIC Yellow Book, ensuring that all parties are aware of how various clauses can influence and govern the course of action in different scenarios. As we continue our thorough analysis of Clause 15.2 in the FIDIC Yellow Book, it is essential to highlight the key considerations that should be kept in mind while employing this clause. These points are critical for ensuring that the termination process is fair, justified, and in line with contractual obligations. Grounds for Termination It is crucial to understand the specific conditions that warrant termination under this clause. These include non-compliance with performance security, Clause 4.2, 
failure to rectify issues as per Clause 15.1, non-conformity with contract standards, Clauses 7.5 and 7.6, financial instability, or ethical violations committed by the contractor. Notice Requirements Be cognizant of the need for a notice period, typically 14 days, prior to contract termination. This requirement is waived in cases of immediate concerns like ethical violations or financial instability, where immediate termination is permissible. Opportunity for Rectification Before proceeding with termination, there is usually a provision for the contractor to correct the issue, especially under Clause 15.1, Notice to Correct. This step is integral for ensuring procedural fairness and compliance. Documentation and Communication Keeping clear and thorough documentation and communication throughout the termination process is vital. This includes issuing detailed notices regarding reasons for rejection or required rectifications, clauses 7.5 and 7.6, and maintaining records of all breaches and interactions. Implications of non-compliance with other clauses Understanding how non-compliance with other related clauses, such as clauses 2.5, 4.2, 7.5, 7.6, and 8.8, can lead to invoking Clause 15.2 is important for comprehensive contract management. Contractor's Post-Termination Obligations Familiarize yourself with the contractor's obligations after termination, which include vacating the site and handing over all relevant documents and materials. Employer's Rights Post-Termination Recognize the rights of the employer following termination. These include completing the works either independently or through other entities, and the potential use of the contractor's resources, if necessary. Handling of contractor's equipment. Be aware of the procedures regarding the contractor's equipment after termination, particularly in scenarios where there are outstanding payments due to the employer. Legal and ethical considerations. Always consider the legal and ethical dimensions of the termination process. Ensure that any termination is justifiable, conducted fairly, and aligns with the terms of the contract. Risk Management View Clause 15.2 as a part of a broader risk management strategy in project execution. Its employment should be considered a last resort, with careful contemplation of the repercussions for both the employer and the contractor. These points serve as a guide to effectively and responsibly implement Clause 15.2, ensuring that all parties are aware of their rights, obligations, and the proper procedures in the context of contract termination. To effectively implement Clause 15.2 from the FIDIC Yellow Book, several essential factors need to be considered. This approach ensures that the termination process is not only compliant with the contract terms but also handled professionally and ethically. Clear understanding of grounds for termination. Gain an in-depth understanding of the specific conditions under Clause 15.2 that authorize the employer to terminate the contract. This includes issues like non-compliance with key clauses, financial instability, ethical violations, and the failure to rectify issues after a notice. Strict adherence to contractual procedures. Follow the contractual procedures meticulously. This involves issuing the required notices, as per clauses 15.1, 7.5, and 7.6, adhering to notice periods, and ensuring all actions are appropriately documented and justified as per contract terms. Proper documentation and record keeping. Maintain detailed records of all communications, notices, and actions related to clause 15.2. Document any breaches, issued notices, and responses from the contractor to ensure transparency and accountability. Fair and reasonable approach. Approach the decision to terminate in a fair and reasonable manner. Allow the contractor a chance to rectify issues and consider the implications of termination on both parties. Legal compliance. Ensure that implementing Clause 15.2 is in compliance with local laws and regulations, especially regarding financial insolvency and ethical violations. Risk assessment and management. Evaluate the risks associated with contract termination, including potential impacts on project timelines, costs, and quality. Develop a strategy for project completion post-termination. Effective communication. Communicate clearly and promptly with all involved parties, including the contractor, engineer, and legal advisors. Clarify the reasons for termination to ensure mutual understanding. Post-termination management. Be prepared to manage the project after termination. This may involve engaging a new contractor, reallocating resources, and addressing any legal or financial consequences. Ethical Considerations 
Conduct the termination process ethically and in good faith. Avoid any arbitrary or unfair reasons for termination. Seeking expert advice. Consider consulting legal experts or professionals experienced in FIDIC contracts. This can ensure correct implementation of the clause and help mitigate potential legal challenges. Implementing Clause 15.2 effectively requires a balanced and informed approach, considering both the contractual obligations and the broader impacts on the project and the involved parties. To fully understand the application of Clause 15.2 in the FIDIC Yellow Book, it's essential to detail the sequence of interactions that typically occur when this clause is invoked. This sequence ensures that the process is handled methodically and in accordance with the contractual terms. Identification of a potential breach. The process initiates when the employer identifies a potential breach of contract by the contractor. This breach could be related to non-compliance with performance security, Clause 4.2, failure to rectify issues, Clause 15.1, or non-adherence to quality standards, Clauses 7.5 and 7.6. Issuance of notice to correct, Clause 15.1. If applicable, the employer or engineer issues a notice to correct, as per Clause 15.1. This notice demands the contractor to remedy the identified failure within a set reasonable period. Evaluation of contractor's response. The employer then assesses the contractor's response to the notice to correct. In cases where the contractor does not adequately address the issues within the stipulated time frame, the situation escalates. Consideration of termination. Clause 15.2. Depending on the contractor's response or inaction, the employer contemplates terminating the contract under Clause 15.2. This decision is influenced by the breach's severity and its potential effects on the project. Issuance of Termination Notice, Clause 15.2. Should the decision to terminate be finalized, the employer issues a termination notice following Clause 15.2. Typically, this notice includes a 14-day period before termination is enacted, except in instances of urgent concerns like ethical violations or financial instability. Contractor's Obligations Post-Termination Following termination, the contractor must comply with the procedures specified in Clause 15.2, which involve vacating the site and submitting all pertinent documents and materials. Employer's Actions Post-Termination Post-termination, the employer may undertake the project's completion, either independently or through other contractors, and may utilize the original contractor's resources as mentioned in Clause 15.2. Handling of financial and legal matters. Subsequent to termination, financial issues, including matters concerning performance security, Clause 4.2, and any claims, Clause 2.5, are settled between the employer and the contractor. Resolution of remaining obligations and rights. The employer and contractor address any residual obligations and rights, including the disposition of equipment and materials as per the contract. Review and Learning After the termination, it is beneficial for both parties to review the events leading to the termination to glean lessons for future contract management and project execution. This detailed sequence outlines the structured approach required for the effective implementation of Clause 15.2 ensuring a fair and legally compliant process for both the employer and the contractor. Detailed explanation of the sequence diagram. Identification of breach. The process initiates with the employer recognizing a breach of contract by the contractor. Breaches may range from non-compliance with performance security to failing to progress with the works, as specified in Clause 15.2. This step is critical as it sets the foundation for potential contract termination. Contractor's Response Following the notification of the breach, the contractor has the opportunity to either acknowledge or dispute the breach. This response is pivotal as it influences the subsequent actions of the employer. It could lead to either resolution of the issue or further escalation. Employer's Decision the employer, after considering the breach and the contractor's response, internally deliberates on whether to proceed with contract termination. This decision-making process is integral as it determines the fate of the contract and the project. Issuing Notice of Termination If the employer decides to terminate the contract, a 14-day notice, unless the situation warrants immediate termination, is issued to the contractor. 
This formal notice is a critical legal requirement, marking the beginning of the termination process. Handover of documents and goods. The contractor is obliged to hand over all pertinent documents and goods to the engineer. This step is essential to ensure that all critical information and materials are transferred for the ongoing or completion of the works. Confirmation of handover. The engineer confirms to the employer that the handover is complete. This confirmation is a vital step, as it verifies that all necessary items have been received, allowing the employer to move forward with the next stages. Release of contractor's equipment. The employer then releases the contractor's equipment, enabling the contractor to organize their removal. This release is a significant step as it facilitates the physical disengagement of the contractor from the project site. Removal of equipment. The contractor arranges for the removal of their equipment from the site. This action symbolizes the actual departure of the contractor from the project, marking an end to their physical presence and involvement. Completion of the works. In the final step, the employer assumes responsibility for the completion of the works either independently or through other entities. This transition is crucial to ensure the project's continuation towards completion despite the contract termination. This sequence diagram provides a comprehensive and orderly overview of the steps involved in employing Clause 15.2 for contract termination under the FIDIC Yellow Book. Each step is integral to the process, ensuring that contract termination is conducted in a structured, transparent, and legally compliant manner. This flowchart provides a structured approach to the implementation of Clause 15.2 in the FIDIC Yellow Book, detailing each step along with associated durations where applicable. Start of the process. The process is initiated when a potential trigger for Clause 15.2 is identified. This could be due to various reasons such as non-compliance or performance issues by the contractor. The timing for this step is variable, depending on project circumstances. Identification of specific breaches. The employer identifies the specific breach, which could include non-compliance with performance security, failure to correct issues, not proceeding with works, or neglecting rejection, remedial work notices. This identification should ideally occur promptly after the breach is noticed. Decision points. Decision to terminate contract. The employer makes a critical decision on whether to terminate the contract based on the identified breach. This decision should be made within a reasonable time frame, ensuring due diligence and fairness. Employer terminates contract. If the decision is to terminate, a 14-day notice is typically issued to the contractor, except in cases of immediate concern. Following the notice, the contractor is required to leave the site and deliver all relevant documents. This process should ideally be completed within the notice period or soon after. Continuation of contract. If the decision is not to terminate, the contract continues as per the agreed terms. The duration of this continuation depends on the contract's original timeline and any adjustments made due to the breach. Employer completes works. After contract termination, the employer may proceed to complete the works, either independently or through other entities. The duration for this will depend on the remaining scope of work and the arrangements made for its completion. Release of contractor's equipment. The contractor's equipment and temporary works are released as required, which is usually conducted shortly after the contract termination. However, this is subject to the settlement of any outstanding payments, which might delay the process. End of process. The process concludes once all actions following the decision are fully executed. The total duration of the process varies, depending on the complexity of the breach, the response times, and the subsequent actions taken by both parties. This flowchart with durations provides a structured timeline for the application of Clause 15.2 in the FIDIC Yellow Book. It outlines the procedural steps and decision points, offering a clear roadmap for managing contract termination scenarios. The duration of each step is indicative and may vary based on specific project and contractual circumstances. And that brings us to the end of our in-depth exploration of Clause 15.2 in the FIDIC Yellow Book. 
We've delved into the complexities and nuances of this pivotal clause, understanding its significance in the realm of contract management within the construction industry. Your support plays an essential role in our journey to provide more educational and insightful content like this. If you found this video helpful and informative, we warmly invite you to join our community by subscribing to our channel. Your subscription not only motivates us, but also helps us continue delivering high quality, educational content tailored to your professional needs. Don't forget to hit the like button if you appreciated this video. Your likes help us gauge which topics resonate most with you, enabling us to create more content that you find valuable. We're curious to hear your thoughts and experiences with the Fittick Yellow Book. Do you have any specific insights or stories related to Clause 15.2? Feel free to share in the comments below. We love engaging with your perspectives and learning together. Thank you for watching, and remember, every like, comment, and subscription goes a long way in helping us bring more educational content your way. Keep learning, stay curious, and we'll see you in our next video.